Hello friends, welcome back to my channel DLA classes. Hope you are all fine and enjoyed my earlier videos. If you have not gone through my earlier videos, please go through it. And if you like the videos, please comment it and also uh, subscribe my channel. So today I will discuss cyclometric complexity in software engineering. Now, uh, before going to discuss the cyclometric complexity, we should know what is control flow graph because cyclometric complexity is calculated based on control flow graph. So let's uh, uh, discuss about control flow graph. Now, what is control flow graph? Control flow graph is a graphical representation of a program that captures the control flow during the execution of the program. It graphically represents all the paths that are traversed during the program execution. It was developed by Francis E. Allen. Now in CFZ, since it is a graph, we need two elements, one is node and other is edges. The node represents the statement or task and the edges represents the control flow between uh, any statements or individual block of the program. So in the picture, you have seen a particular simple uh, typical control flow graph consisting of three statements and one condition. So it has uh, three nodes and two edges. Now, there are different type of representation used uh, in control for graph because we know that in a particular program, we may have different uh, statements. For example, it may have simple statements uh, with no conditions, some conditional statements just like uh, if, else, switch cases, and these type of statements are there. Also, it will have a while for uh, just like in, uh, for example, in C. Uh, for those statements may be repeated statements. So overall uh, all statements can be classified as uh, sequential statements then iterative statements and conditional statements. For sequence statements the control flow graph look like this and uh, selection for example uh, there are two diagrams is shown one consisting of if else condition other maybe switches because uh, in if else there is a particular statement it can have condition based on that it has to take two different situations but uh, in this, this diagram is representing the switch case because there is a condition and based on that condition multiple uh, situations are there out of this only one situation has to be executed and in case of iteration or loop statements uh, there may be repeated uh, uh, it's happened to be executed and after all the program will be ended. So overall this type of uh, some architecture as are used to build a control flow graph. Now let us take one by one example. So selection, sequence, iteration, statements are there. Let us discuss about uh, how the selection or sequence statements are represented. So let us take one particular program consisting of two statements, a very simple program, print x and print y. So the uh, CFG of this particular program look like this because uh, there are two uh, statements or two nodes are there, one edge between them. So selection, let us take a simple program which is consisting of uh, if and else conditions here x greater than 0 then x is positive otherwise x is negative and you have to print x. So this program look like this because uh, four statements uh, are there so four nodes will be created. So condition 1 if, uh, if condition is satisfied it will traverse this part 1, 2, 4. If the condition is not satisfied it will go 4, 1, 3 and 4. So this is a selection statements. Now how the iterations or looping statements are represented. So let us take one simple program finding the difference between x and y. Two variables are there. There is a while while, while loop. Uh, since if while x greater than y, whole condition will be exhibited. Now how it is represented. So let us uh, step by step as, uh, we go through it. So first statement executed. So how many number of nodes are there? Nine nodes. So nine nodes will be created. So first statement executed. So one node will be created. Then second statement. So there is a path between one and two. Third statement while while if, if while is satisfied, it will enter the loop. So statement four will be executed. If condition is satisfied, then it will execute the number five statement. If uh, uh, then it will go to come back to the loop if uh, the condition satisfied. So again it uh, go back to the file condition. If this time again condition occurs, then it will follow three, four, five, seven, three, four, five, seven like this. If this time condition while condition is not satisfied, it will go to the statement eight. So then it will end up for given statement number nine. So this is one situation. Then another situation maybe then it can execute say one, two, three, four. Then in four, if condition is not satisfied, it will go to statement number six. Then this loop will be repeated. So this is look like this. So you see the animation of this program. 
so this diagram is representing the control flow graph of this particular program so till now we have understood uh, how what is control flow graph and how the different statements are represented now why control flow graph is so important because the control flow graph is basically representing the overall uh, inflow of the particular statements in a program during execution so it is statically correctly represents the system so it is uh, basically used in static analysis or compiler designs uh, so there is control flow graph but uh, in cyclometric com complexity it is also important because cyclometric complexity uh, basically uh, error finding techniques uh, in software engineering so control flow graph is also important so till now we have discussed this so let us go forward to discuss what is cyclometric complexity cyclometric complexity is the measure of the complexity of a particular program or a code segment it basically represents the complexity or internal complexity of the particular program in execution so that means uh, it is an error finding techniques so uh, it is a quantitative measure of linearly independent part of the code segment and uh, what is linearly independent part? Uh, let us take the definition that any two parts are said to be linearly independent if at least one of them has a particular edge uh, that is not common to the other. So that means two linearly independent part has at least one node or one sorry one edge that is common to not common to them. So it was developed by Thomas J. McCabe in 1976. So it is also that's why known as McCabe's cyclometric complexity. It is very important metric in um, uh, software testing because it is also used in uh, path testing, which will be discussed in uh, upcoming lectures. So uh, uh, let us take a simple example. Here you see a particular program, uh, program's uh, CFZ graph. So here are five nodes are there. So there's a part between these two. So there is another condition. That is the if, if this is if conditions and uh, if, if else conditions is there, then another part may be executed. So this is a part. So there are two parts, one, two, three, four, five, and another part may be one, two, three, four, six. So these two parts are linearly independent to each other because uh, both have at least one node which is not common to the other so they are linearly independent part now uh, how the um, cyclometric complexity is, is calculated now there are different methods to find out the cyclometric complexity basically uh, it has three methods to find out the cyclometric complexity now cyclometric complexity uh, uh, the first method is uh, let us take the let us discuss the first method in first method it uh, calcul it is calculated by using the uh, uh, counting of uh, the number of edges and number of nodes and also the number of connected components so m is equal to e minus n plus twice p where m represents the cyclometric complexity of a particular program good now e represents the total number of edges in the program and represents number of nodes in the uh, cfz twice p p represents the number of connected components so what is connected component let us take a simple example so you see in this picture we have seen a particular graph uh, it is a cfz here you see all the nodes are connected uh, to each other by some parts uh, there is no disconnected components so this is a simple graph it, uh, so the connected component for this graph is one let us take uh, another uh, graph so another graph means it's part of the graph so this overall uh, this diagram represents a single graph then you see that eight and nine are connected but no none of them are connected to the particular this left hand side uh, component so this graph has two connected components so one component has uh, these five nodes and another components connect and nodes are two connected so this diagram is having two connected connected so if uh, uh, this graph uh, is concerned it has two components uh, but if, if, if you are considering a single particular program in program uh, respect then it all, a single program always have a one connected component because in a particular program all nodes are connected now let us discuss the first method what is the first method then cyclometric complexity is calculated as total number of edges minus number of edges, uh, nodes plus twice p here you see the diagram uh, this is a cfg of a program which is discussed earlier it has uh, nine nodes I have marked the edges. So there are how many number of edges? One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten edges are there. So number of edges ten. Number of nodes nine. Three is one because I have just now told you that a single program only one connected component. You see there is no uh, not more than one connected component. So P is equal to one. The total cyclic break complexity is ten minus nine plus two into one. So one plus two equal to three. So total cyclic complexity for this diagram is three. Let us take the second method. In the second method, the same um, complexity is calculated by finding the number of bounded area plus one. So number of bounded area means number of closed area. So here you see this is one particular area which is closed between three, four, five, and seven. There is another area B which is covered by four, five, six, seven. These nodes. So how many number of total number of connected uh, bounded area two? So m equal to two plus one. So three, so cyclic complexity is three. You see that uh, in both the uh, findings, you have same cyclic complexity is calculated. Let us go for the third method. In third method, uh, cyclic complexity is calculated based on the number of conditions, total number of conditions plus one. So in this diagram, you see there are two conditions. Here, while condition is there. If this based on this condition, you can go for different paths. There is another condition at node four. So this three. This similar nodes represent the two number of conditions. So total number of conditions two. So m equal to two plus one equal to three. So total number of cyclic complexity three. You see, if you can follow any number of method, any any particular method, you will get the same number of complexity. So based on your requirement, you can go for any method. So um, uh, when you are calculating the cyclic complexity, uh, you should remember that the higher the cyclic complexity means that the program is difficult to understand. If your cyclic complexity value is low, then it's a simple program and it is easy to understand. So higher complexity program expect to have more undetected errors because if, if your program is large and part independent parts will be larger. So if your independent parts are part will be larger, so there is a, having more chances of not traversing this part. So your test cases may not cover. Of all the particular parts, so uh, I am, uh, happening of errors or uh, finding of error may be difficult to there. So errors and the undetection rate is higher. So that is the main problem. So generally, uh, your, if your cyclic complexity is between one to ten, then it, the programs are taken up. It's a simple program. In more than ten, then it is uh, a, a difficult, a bit difficult to find out the uh, cyclic complexity. Uh, sorry, cy uh, error finding. So uh, so hope uh, you have understood uh, what is uh, cyclic complexity and how it is calculated and what is the uh, basis of the control for graph and why it is important in cyclic complexity. So. So hope you have enjoyed the video if you like it then please share it and if you are new subscriber then also subscribe to one channel so thank you